Oh, let's start that over. Good evening, YouTube. Thank you for joining me here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> I thought I was already live earlier, like a few moments ago, and I look at my other screen over here and it says, click here to go live. And once again, exercising that Prism Live live stream. Oh my gosh. Prism Live live stream <laughs> muscle. All right. I am breathing heavy right now because I just got a set of pull-ups because I was chilly. And I thought, you know what? I don't, wanna, I don't really want to wear the sweater right now because I warm up. And I thought, let me just knock out a set of pull-ups. I'll get warmer faster doing pull-ups than knocking out a set of push-ups in a shorter amount of time. So that's what I did. <laughs> but appreciate you joining. Guapame Serbo, thank you for joining me from Georgia. Yeah, it's about 745 out here. 45 degrees outside today. I think it got as high as 48 earlier, but I thought it's springtime. I mean, we are how many days into spring? And spring was supposed to come early, according to Pun Sutani Phil, the, I was going to say gopher, the, uh, the groundhog that did not see his shadow and therefore was not scared, and he did not go back into his den to continue hibernating. But... Look at that. The stream health is good. And then here it says the stream's current bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. We recommend that you use a stream bitrate of 6,800 kilobits per second. So for my YouTube geniuses out there that are aware of what that means, let me know what that means because I don't exactly know what that means. Clearly, I'm trying to figure all this stuff out as we go. And that's cool, right? <laughs> But what did you today? What did you do? What did you do today? Do day? <laughs> yeah. What did you do today? Today, you know, it was. Uh, I'm doing a Wednesday wrap up right now of what I've done today because I feel pretty accomplished. I got a lot done today, and I I feel like I've I, I fulfilled my why. My why is to shape the lives of young people so that they're prepared for life as contributing members of society. And I'll explain that here in just a moment because um, I thought it was pretty cool. And it, I really enjoy teaching and flying this group of youth that came in today. But, yeah, it started out with just my normal daily battle rhythm, you know, my, my normal daily routine. I have a checklist in the brain of what I do, a process. Everything is the same, so I don't have to think about what I need to do. I'm getting it done. I know it's getting done. Breakfast is the same for the most part every morning unless I decide to deviate from it by eating a bowl of cereal with with my with my normal breakfast. And so my breakfast consisted of this morning one slice of ham, handful of mixed nuts from Sam's Club, salted, of course, and and one of those little uh, tiny little oranges. What are they called? Friendlies or something like that? The, the cuties. <laughs> one of those little oranges. And it was pretty good. It was it was a good breakfast. I was happy with myself. You know, it's nutrition. It's small enough where it's not so, if you will, where I'm not full. But it gives me enough energy to make it to lunch, and then I eat lunch. And I have my afternoon snack around 5 o'clock or so, which, no, I think it was actually at like 6. Something like that. And I was planning to go live a lot earlier, but I did not. Um... Why didn't I? Because part of the live stream today was to talk a little bit about the Baofeng UV5R ham radios that I got, which are actually still charging. They're sitting on the charger right now, um, right over here. They're actually plugged into my anchor power station to charge. So maybe that's why it's taking a little bit longer, but I don't know what the power output going out is, but they are charging, and that's clearly a good thing because I do want to get them going. I want to... I want to try it out. I would like to make my first call via ham radio tonight if possible. Now, upon reading the directions that came with it, it said, let's see here, regarding the battery, you like my glasses? <laughs> These glasses are awesome. My brother-in-law introduced them to me when he was down here for a visit, and I was like, those are awesome because they don't dingle dangle like down here, like my other set of glasses that had the lanyard on it, all right? They are right where they need to be, and they're easy for me to don 
and Dolph. And they're always there, you know. They're made by Click. I can put a link for you if you're interested. Just let me know. Hey, Jason, where'd you get those glasses? And I'll put a link for where I got them online. But, yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out and joining me and just listening to me to about, talk about what I did today and talk about these radios. So, after I got to work, heavy admin day, of course, as usual, busy as normal, normal, busy, you know, business as usual. And I actually got a chance to teach a STEM class today, one of our local high schools. Hey, Joji, thanks for joining as well. Appreciate you supporting. And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're listening and hopefully your nose isn't bleeding too much with all my English. <laughs> but um, no, that's awesome. Your English is clearly much better than my Tagalog. So <laughs> thank you for joining and listening in. Yes, these are pretty cool, right? These these are awesome. I wear them like this, you know, and they're primarily reading glasses. Will I get something that's, uh, you know, so that I can, like, bifocals in the future? Probably, you know, probably, probably down the road. Um, getting old. I didn't realize how fast my eyes would deteriorate <laughs> as far as the clearly the clearness of you know, being able to see things. I can see things from here to the screen, but reading small print like this, I mean, look at this. This is teeny tiny. I can't read that, you know. So right here, blurry, 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 and I can read it, but it's too far away. I can't read it. So these are perfect, and it makes things so much more clear. They're like the blue, blue light specials also. I work at iFly. That's cool, too. Yes, I do work at iFly. <laughs> Have you been to an iFly before? And which one? I actually, I manage the uh, the location in Virginia Beach. So, yeah, I manage the location at Virginia Beach. I'm also a flight instructor there, and I am a STEM educator there, where I talk about the concepts of how people fly inside of the wind tunnel. You know, the concepts of, uh, it's an acronym, STEM, for sorcery, trickery, enchantment, and magic. Right? Uh, the concepts, of course, are not sorcery, tricky, enchantment, or magic. They are, in fact, st STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And my degree is in mechanical engineering. And so, of course, that made me 100% fully qualified to teach this course to include, I'm just, I'm, I mean, I'm a pretty good instructor. <laughs> I'm a pretty good teacher. I feel like I can get my point across the, and teach a lesson that's somewhat entertaining. I mean, the kids do not like my dad jokes. Or maybe they do, and they just th say they don't. <laughs> but uh, they get a kick out of uh, the, the jokes that I, that I say, the things that I do, and how I teach it. In fact, some of the teachers are like, wow, you're really good with the kids. Because they can be really disruptive, and I just let them be disruptive on their own. And, you know, they'll eventually listen. And such. There's one point, one kid was like hitting on another student, and I said, hey, cut that out. And I kind of disciplined him a little bit, but you keep your hands to yourself, is basically what I told the kid. And he, you know, he felt bad, but the teacher's like, we have to tell him that all the time. And that's amazing that you got him to do that. But I was stern with him. And sometimes these kids, they need to be spoken to sternly to, you know, to behave, to be disciplined, because they're acting that way because they maybe they've never been disciplined before. But once they, when they are, They'll, they'll figure it out. I mean, they're, they're, some, some kids are still young enough that uh, they're still growing and developing. Which leads back to my why of shaping the lives of young people so that they're prepared for, to, to be contributing members to society. And I learned that, if you will, it's not something that I made up. That was something that my peers, if you will, in this study group, for lack of a better term, put together for me. We were going, all going through this course together and... They basically, you know, we, we told stories in our lives that helped us, you know, feel good about ourselves. You know, the stories that made me, that I felt helped develop who, develop who I am today. You know, being a helper, you know, a protector of others, you know, being prepared because I was a scout. So, you know, scout motto, <laughs> be prepared. And so talking about these stories that helped shape who I am and as a result of that they you know they said hey we think that you know your why is this and of course it wasn't as <laughs> this is my office I guess you could call it a man cave <laughs> I don't think 
yeah i mean it's I've, I've got all kinds of cool stuff in here you know from you know my radio controlled drones you know and i've got let's see you only see one two three drones here that's one of my radio controllers here that i just installed some lights on as you can see you know i just i did a video on installing those lights into that unit um i've got my heavy duty sewing machine and yes i can sew filipino right <laughs> my mom taught me how to sew but this is where I do a lot. This is clearly where my studio, my home studio, where I both, you know, build my drones. I do my video editing. I sew stuff. You know, I make repairs on things that uh, um, I, I've actually got an embroidery machine over there. Here, I'll, I'll take I'll take you on a little tour. America. There's my helmets, some more drones. Embroidery machine, and it is a mess for sure. It is a mess in here, but I know where everything is, and that's what's most important, right? As long as I know where everything is. But yes, welcome to my man cave. <laughs> that's why I ask cool stuff around you. And yeah, and as funny as it sounds, Joji, this is just this office space. My garage is full of more <laughs> stuff. Because, well, let's see here. In 2019, I got in, well, I'll say 2016, I got into climbing trees and I learned how to become a tree climbing arborist. But I decided to not open up my own business doing that stuff because I really wasn't interested in, as funny as it sounds, you know, climbing and cutting trees for others. You know, the Adventurer's Lounge. Good evening and thank you for joining as well. Allow me to provide you with a blue wrench and jacket. So, Scott. Old Fart Gaming. Thanks for pre thanks for hanging out, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> but yes, and I generally know where everything is. I have to dig around. And For example, I was looking for... I've got a label maker that is in the drawer of that red cabinet that you saw. But I was looking for the box that contained all the different label tapes. And I couldn't find it. And I was like, where did I put it? And it was on a shelf. I just, you know, what I should, what I thought to myself... I need to organize things a little bit better and so I can be more efficient, which goes back to the few live streams that I had before also, you know, talking about efficiency. And so it's one of those things where, you know, got to be efficient so that I can save time. And that's really what it's all about, to be able to save time. Time is a commodity, right? Time is precious. Money. Time is money, right? And so that's part of why I have a, no, a daily battle rhythm as well. And I make a checklist of all the things that I need to do. When I check something off that checklist as well, it makes me feel good. But this daily battle rhythm has helped me so much in saving time because I know what I need to do. It's in my memory now. Should I write it down to make sure that I check things off so I don't forget? Probably. You know, probably just to, once again, save a little bit extra time. Now, how much time can one save really? Well, I might save two seconds doing one thing. I might save another two seconds doing something else because I've become more efficient. I've got three vitamins that I take in the morning, a vitamin B, a vitamin C, and a vitamin, I think that's D, right? <laughs> no, that's, that's, all right, A, B, C, D, E, F. No, that's, that's F, that's D, right? Anyway, regardless, but a vitamin D. <laughs> and so, you know, I pop the lid, take out one pill, put it back. What if I were to take those three pills and set it up in one of those pill boxes like I see a lot of people think do? You think that'll save me a little bit of time? Maybe another two seconds, maybe three seconds actually. And if I could save that, those seconds over time, it allows me to have that time back so I could waste it on something else. <laughs> so I could spend time A through Z, outstanding, very healthy then, very healthy. My uh, doctor says that I my diet is pretty good. You know how I what I consume is decent enough. My cholesterol levels are good, so that's a good thing. And so it's one of those things where, you know, I want to ensure that I stay healthy because I intend to live a really long and healthy life. You know, barring any major injuries or sicknesses, of course. You know why? Why would I want to live for so long? So I could hang out with you guys, you know, so I can enjoy the things that I enjoy doing, the, doing things that make me happy, like live streaming, flying my drones, playing Fortnite, which is a new hobby of mine since, uh, as of actually today, I've been playing Fortnite for three months.
today is my three month anniversary of playing Fortnite. As funny as that sounds, in fact, my uh, let's see, I started a gaming channel, Cy Raval. If you're interested in taking a look at it, that, taking a look at that, and interested in gameplay, I know Joji, you were there watching me play. In fact, I'm gonna play probably in about an hour from now when my brother uh, gets online, because we. This is as funny as it sounds. Fortnite has brought my brother and I closer together we don't we i mean we, everybody has their own lives but he's in texas i'm here in virginia and it's it's really cool that we pretty much hang out every night we don't talk about much you know we just play the game you know we talk about this and that what we did kind of like what i'm doing with you guys now tonight you know talking about uh, my you know what i did throughout the day and yes i need to drink some water as well i'm starting to get <laughs> parched as funny as it sounds In my son's college, collegiate uh, coffee mug. <laughs> He's a freshman in college now, a rugby player, you know, a little tough guy. But Koala, 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 thank you for joining and hanging out with us as well. I haven't seen you in a while. All right. But um, yeah, so what else did I do today? I taught a STEM group. You know, these kids were in a high school and they are a STEM specific class. So they were really into all of the things that I had to say when it came to the science and engineering of iFly Virgin Beach, all the technology that was involved. And they had questions afterwards. I, you know, I actually stayed after longer and just answered some more of their questions, which was pretty awesome, you know? So, and not only did I teach a STEM class, but I flew them, you know, which for me is always a treat as a flight instructor where I teach them how to fly and I put them in a wind tunnel and we fly together. And this group, you know, it's a, it's every year it's a different group because every year the 11th graders go to 12th grade and they go off to college eventually. But every year this one teacher brings his students to iFly to listen to me talk about STEM. The STEM of iFly, Virginia Beach Indoor Skydiving, which is awesome. And if you ever are in the Virginia Beach area and you want to come and fly, my last name is a discount code, Levarius, if you make a reservation online. And if you do, let me know that you are in town to fly, and maybe I will be your personal flight instructor, and I'll float some personal of my flight time for you as well. So, But we got to coordinate that. We have to coordinate that. So, yeah, <laughs> down the road. I think that will that would be really cool, actually. You know? So, but... Yeah, I, um, what else did I do today? So after that, today is Wednesday, and payroll is this Friday. So yes, I'm, as the general manager of iFly Virginia Beach, I do payroll there as well. So I did that and got that done in, you know, I wouldn't say record time because it's always a bear, you know, just making sure all the numbers are correct because I am very diligent about making sure that my teammates are, pay, are, are paid appropriately and quick to correct it when, when there is something to correct so got that done and after that was done hung out with the boss for a little bit longer you know bob pizzini he's the ceo and owner of iFly virginia beach a fellow navy man as well and what's really cool about working for bob is that we being former being veterans we run our unit our iFly virginia beach like a military unit you know um lots of leadership you know lots not so much management you know but we let the staff basically take care of themselves. You know, we're a small unit. We don't have a lot of outside support, but uh, we try to get things done as best as we can, which makes us a really cohesive team. And we understand each other at the same time also. So, all right, Georgie, what are you saying? Dance or sing dance song with my BFF Scott and Old Fart Gaming here at this link. Yes, feel free to post the links that you'd like to promote. You know, promote each other, promote yourself. It doesn't matter to me. I, bottom line is we're here supporting each other, just like you guys are supporting me, and I'll get to your links as well, you know, in the future, so that I, I too can support you as well. But um, just writing some thoughts and notes down over here off to the side, don't mind me. But I really appreciate all of you hanging out and listening to me rant and rave and talk about the day. Because once I got done with the day, I thought to myself, I really want to get these ham radios set up and start this course that I purchased. So as a result of drone flying, and this was also something that I've wanted to do since I was in high school many, many years ago. Yeah, 30 plus years ago, <laughs> we'll just say. But back then, you had to learn Morse code. You know, did it, 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 did right? All those, uh, you know, characters, if you will. And I learned it. However, <laughs> thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. 
I learned it, but I never got a chance to take the test. And once I went off to college and I just didn't have time to do it in college because I was focused on other things and becoming a, an amateur radio operator was not a priority of mine at the time. And then I you know, got commissioned and joined the Navy. And in the Navy, I just didn't have time either because I was either training all the time or partying it up all the time <laughs> in the, when I wasn't training. Uh, deploying, you know, and um, and such. So it didn't surf resurface again until I started flying drones. Because when you fly a drone with goggles on, right? So for example, allow me to go get uh, a set of goggles here. Let's see. So for example, these goggles here, whoops, for example, these goggles here, right? I'll wear them on my head like this, all right? And this drone, this drone here has a camera on it right there. It sends the video feed from the camera, from the drone, to the goggles so I could see where this is going. And for those of you that have seen my videos my, on this channel, the uh, drone videos, this is how I fly a lot, right? And it makes me feel like I'm in the drone, flying around, going up and down and underwater. Yes, I've actually, not this one, but I've put this style of drone in the water before. <laughs> well, that's another story. <laughs> or that's another story slash that's another video. <laughs> Personable skill like a foreign language. You lose it if you don't use it. Yes, 100% agree. Everything is, right? Everything is perishable until you really have it mastered. You know, I mean, riding a bicycle. It's a skill for sure. You forget, but then you'll remember once you get back on it, right? Same thing with flying, right? Same thing with tying knots. Same thing with live streaming. I mean, I had to figure out how, why this wasn't, I, I thought I was live, I think, two minutes into my live stream and I realized I had to click go live on this screen here in order to actually be live because I don't do it as much on the computer. If you recall, for nearly two months straight, the month of January and February, I was drive streaming a lot via cellular phone, right, in the truck using these cool microphones, these cool DJI microphones. And it was pretty awesome, you know, really awesome setup. And I discovered that it just, for me, I thought I could do it in a way that was safe, but after reviewing and watching some of those videos, I thought, yeah, you think you're safe, but you look like you're being unsafe. And to me, you know, that's, that's kind of a big deal also. And I want to ensure that I am safe for, you know, for myself, as well as the other people that I share the road with. So I no longer do that, which, you know, that's cool too, right? All right. So. What else did I do today? Oh, and I got back here on this live stream and I'm hanging out with you in about, uh, maybe we'll, we'll call it, you know, 50 minutes from now. I'm going to play some Fortnite with my brother. So you're welcome to join me there on that live stream. I actually haven't set that up yet, but with my gaming live streams, it's kind of like I'll do it when I get to it because I'm not going to set up the, uh, for now, for now. Because once we're finished here, I'll take Maggie outside, you know, give her her, her cheese and pill <laughs> and go from there. But yeah, that's what I've got going on. And so I was talking about ham radios. I got a set of ham radios the other day. They came in the mail. And I've had my ham radio license for about two years. Oh, but going back to the drone thing. So the reason why I got my ham radio license was because when I fly, when I transmit the video feed into the goggles, it's transmitting from the drone at 5.8 gigahertz, which is the which is the bandwidth that is owned, if you will, by amateur radio operators. And so in order for me to, if you will, be legal using the, you know, flying this drone with the goggles, I sh I'm supposed to have my FCC amateur radio operator's license. So I thought, hey, let's do it. I studied for it, you know, and I passed the test. There's three levels, technician, general, and amateur extra. And they're really easy to study for. I decided to purchase a course, which came with practice tests for those licenses. 
and it's definitely going to be i think a skill that's going to that's that will start to be used a lot more pretty soon i mean for example the, these are per the you know per the advertisement for these or the marketing things this little radio has a has a range and i assume i have to put the long antenna on right you can see how long this radio antenna is Eight miles. Is that pretty good? I live. I live. Eight, I live. I, I work eight miles away from, or nine miles away from the house. Line of sight, no obstructions. Right. VHF. I think this is UHF capable as well, but I now have the ability to make communications with, if you will, once my wife gets her ham radio operator's license, with her, if we need to talk because the cell phone towers are out, because they don't work anymore, because. We got EMP'd, so I'll eventually get a Faraday cage or, you know, a, a metal box, put these in for emergency purposes. Ah, right? Not that I'm a prepper or anything, but you never know. And at a minimum, I'm prepared with my ham radio, with my licenses, with the skills, because I'll continue to, you know, operate these on a regular basis, making communications for ham radios. And the course that I actually, that I purchased was actually from ham radio prep.com in fact let me show you my right side monitor here let's see here this is the website here ham radio prep and I purchased this course actually let me log out so you can see the full interface ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio and I'm, I'm real I started getting into this hobby also ham radio prep Let's see here. Let's break this out into its own window. Hamradioprep.com. And I d actually purchased this course here as a bundle. And let's see here. Pricing. I purchased this bundle. Actually, wow, that's on it's on sale. I actually pr I think I bought it for the full price of 199 um in 2022. And in fact, if you did, if you if you're into it and you want to get one of these courses courses is one of these courses, my last name is a discount code in this website. Also, it's in the description below. But yeah, Lavarius is a discount code for this website too. If you decide to get your ham radio operator's license, it's super easy just to get the technician license to be able to operate these radios. This technician and general license course allows you to transmit more power, which will allow you to get a more advanced rig, more advanced setup. Like for example, the, you know, to transmit high frequency radios. And so I actually signed up for this class last night on the live stream. Was it last night or two nights ago on the live stream? And I'm going to finish because I got hype into it, you know, <laughs> but I'm going to finish this course first and then, Hey, Mofant Fitness. Good evening. Thank you for joining. I just met you this evening as well, so I appreciate you hanging out with me and being so quick to join and hang out. That's awesome. But um, yeah, talking a little bit about ham radios right now because this is, I'm not going to say that this is the new hobby, but this is another hobby that supports that other hobby of drone flying. And, you know, I really believe it's going to be something that I'll be using and, you know, have the ability to use to make communications with other ham radio operators. To include making possibly making amateur radio, you know, providing amateur radio emergency services, you know. So I will have a huge radio station here at some point. I mean, look at my man cave, right, Joji? <laughs> but yeah, I I intend to get this set up here, this uh, icon. Follow along with the class and go from there. But yeah, I wanted to show you this class because I am gonna log in right now and it's automatic license, you know. So you can see I took the technician license course here. Let's do this too so you can see my, I think it's Epic Pen. Nope, that, oops, we're not, we don't need to go there. I meant Epic Pen and Mouse Highlighter, Mouse Highlight. So you can see my mouse a little bit better. Put you off to the side over here. You're welcome, Mofant Thickness. Thank, fitness. <laughs> Thank you for joining here. So you should see a yellow dot where my mouse pointer is. And what's neat about Epic Pen is I can actually draw stuff here like this, like this. All right. So first thing I did was I did this course. It says 77% complete because I think I just started taking practice tests and felt ready for the test. 
I don't know why it says 0% complete here. Maybe I finished the course and then decided to redo the course for some reason and so put my progress back at 0%. And of course, the third test was the amateur extra license, which I finished. And honestly, I think I crammed for a good week with this course alone, taking practice tests, of course, followed by this, I crammed for three days, which was miserable because those three days, I was actually like, I did it college style where I was up all night for three days. You know, maybe I got three hours, two hours of sleep. And then I was coaching <laughs> some skydivers that rented out the wind tunnel and how to fly better outside the wind, uh, inside of the wind tunnel. And then I took my time and actually took a good two weeks to study for this one was smarter about it. So tonight we are now on this course here. What in, let's see here. Let's go with pink. I am now in this course, the Baofeng Basics. And so let's go ahead into Baofeng Basics because that's what I wanted to show you. So let's clear this out. Oop, uh, let's see here. Again, let's see, nope, that's not it. Back, 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 back. I forgot how to clear. Um, nope, nope. That's just to close the thing. Nope. And nope. That's not it. Well, it's all gone anyway. So I started this and I thought, you know what? Let me just, let's do this together. You know, I thought. Now, when these batteries ship, they might have about 25% of battery charge in the batteries itself. The instructions say that you're supposed to charge these batteries for five hours. You know, and I thought, ooh, I don't like that. You know, let me fix something here also because... I don't exactly like where this is. I want to put this over here instead. Because I'm looking this way. So I think it's more natural for me. With the camera on my left side, I think my screen should be here on this right side in this corner versus that corner or that corner over there. <laughs> that that corner <laughs> over there. The other the far corner. So, yeah, I went through the introduction. They talk about the course a little bit. Setting up the radio is where we are now. So let's go ahead and do this. This is one of the battery packs, and we're going to use one of the battery packs that's... Oh, good. We've got a full, we've got a full battery here. So we're going to throw that one on the charger. And I'm actually going to change out the antennas because who knows? If we get things set up... Maybe you guys can listen in on my first CQ, my first Charlie Quebec communication call, right? I'm putting in the long range antenna because who knows well who will be able to talk to tonight, right? Using this ham radio, so, a stranger. <laughs> but let's see here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so I've connected the battery pack already and I've already charged up the battery. Now, you always have to remember from my courses, you always need to make sure that your antenna is attached to the radio before you power it on because you could do some serious damage to this because it's trying to transmit and it can't because it doesn't have this piece of equipment, you know, or this stubby antenna or that other, you know, shorter length antenna attached to it. Now, as you can see, with this, it's it, what this course is telling me to do is, and we'll just follow step by step. Take the battery pack, identify the side that should face inward towards the radio, All right? So we'll do like that. In fact, would it be better? We need that radio for our boat in the Philippines. Yeah, you know what? It's a uh, the link. There is a link in the description below. I think it's the first line in the description, where it is Amazon, but. At least you have the specs so that you can try to source it locally. You might, they might even sell these in the stores over there in the Philippines. So take a look. This is the Baofeng UV5R. That's the model. There is a more updated model out there, but I wanted to go exactly along with the course. Um, maybe I'll get that radio next to see because that one's like 60 bucks for one radio. This was a kit, a total kit. I think I paid 70 US dollars for two radios and all that other stuff that's in the box that it came with. Several different antennas, two charging batteries, two radios, two sets of pack, battery packs. But pretty simple to install the battery pack. So as you can see, you know what, let's do this also so you can see what I'm doing at the same time, I think. Um, make this cam a little bit larger. Let's see here and 
it might be a little bit difficult to do. And then put this, let's see, like so. Would that be helpful? What do you think? And make this a little bit longer down here. Is that a nicer view? For you? Oh, you can't see what I'm, I'm actually adjusting it on the left side here. Because I have it in studio mode. So let's do this. Let's get it rid of studio mode so you can see exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Where's that little arrow? There it is. So there. And maybe it's a little bit easier for you to, to see. So here we are, right? Clearly the battery pack, it's pretty self-explanatory on how to insert this into the radio. Pretty easy, simple, yeah? And then battery connectors face towards the radio. Gently slide the battery pack until you hear it click. I didn't hear a click, but I can I, I could feel that it's seated appropriately. Plug the charging cable to the charging station and let it charge. Now I do have a full charge on this particular radio here. Attaching the antenna, never push the Press the top without an antenna firmly screwed in. Failure to do this will result in severe damage to your radio and is dangerous to your health. Oh, interesting. I didn't. I did read that in my in my studies. Granted, my studies was they were. I did it two years ago. But yeah. All right. So continue on, and just to show you here, this is pretty easy to install. All right. In fact, let's do this. Take a look at it from this angle here overhead. So. Here is, I have to do it like this so you can, it'll actually focus. There's just like in, oh wait, um, let's see here. I'm thinking, yeah, so you can see that there. Just like in the right monitor, yeah? Here it is, it's like this. All right. Screw the antenna clockwise by hand until it is tight. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's it. You've successfully installed your antenna to your Baofeng UV5R. There we are. Ready to, ready to talk. I'll be calling CQ here in a minute. CQ is the term for, hey, all, all, like a all points bulletin stations kind of thing, right? And again, it's been a while since I've taken my course. <laughs> Perishable skills, right? Complete and continue. All right. Marietta Garcia, thanks for joining and hanging out with us also. All right. Let me uh, help you out here and go from there. You completed setting up your radio. Continue is the next step. So getting to know your radio. All right. So this is pretty cool. Let's move. Uh, I guess I got to move this thing off to the side to this side here. So move you over here so it's just easier to see stuff I'll look a little bit crooked but before we start programming the radio let's get to know some of the most important controls you can review the diagram here so clearly the antenna oh there's a flashlight there so that's cool knob on volume LCD display frequency mode channel selector LED indicator okay got it SP and mic frequency display switches Valving band key right there, keypad clearly. And then on one side, there's my call button, that orange button that's on the side. And let's see, what else do we have here? This is press to talk button. All right, press to talk. On the other side is are the ports for the microphones. For the microphone, for, okay. Take it off from the top, from the side there. So there. And then that's just on one side. Nice. I would. It, it, it seems like it's waterproof or water resistant, but I would ensure that I don't use this in the rain. I'm sure there are better other radios out there that are more suited for weather and more ruggedness. Again, I don't know the... Hey, cool cat. Good evening, Mike. How you doing, brother? Yeah, talking a little bit about this radio. I'll be making... I'll, I'll be... Uh, Making CQ with you here in a little bit. <laughs> Granted, this is only an 8-watt radio, and it does have a range of 8 miles. So unless you happen to be in the area. <laughs> so these are the most important controls to know at this point. Power knob. Turn clockwise, turn on the radio. Push the talk button. VFO, MR buttons, button switches, frequency mode, and channel mode. Yeah, just going through this course, and I thought I'd you know, bring YouTube in on this course with me. 
you know, as I figure out this radio. So, Cool Cat is in England, in the United Kingdom. For those of you that have not met Cool Cat yet, he's a cool cat. That's for darn sure. <laughs> he is a gamer as well in PUBG. So, Scott, if you play PUBG, he's a, uh, you know, Cool Cat. Cool Cat's the man. He gets, he gets it done. All right, simply look at the front of your radio underneath the keypad to see its model number. So the model number, as you can see here, right? I can't see if you can see that, but um, it should say UV5R. And there's an 8W attached to that as well. That means it is an 8R, 8-watt radio, right? Screen icon definitions. Note, you won't need to know all of these to be successful in programming and using your radio. They are shown here for your information. All right, so I'm not going to go through all of this in detail just yet. You know, I learned something today what Vox stands for, and I've heard Vox all the time, right? And it it's, a, it's an acronym, or not merely an acronym, but I would say it's more of a, uh, let's see here, um, I guess a terminology for voice-operated uh, switch. Where is that? I learned it right here in the ARRL.org website, it, you know. Nearly every modem has modern radio has a voice operated switch, Vox. And I was like, oh. And I first remember hearing that term, or the term when it stood out the most was when I was watching that one movie, Apollo 13, with Tom Hanks when they were on the thing. Are we on Vox? Because they were yelling at each other in the space capsule because they were stuck up there in space. And, are we on Vox? And then they're like, no. And then he pressed the talk the button and he goes, uh, Houston, this is whatever, you know, Apollo 13, <laughs> calmed himself down, and it was pretty cool, but yeah, and that was pretty cool, that was like, oh, that's what Vox stands for, I never thought to Google it, because I never think in terms of, of Vox, you know, but what an interesting switch, you know, voice-operated switch, pretty cool, so Joji is saying, inviting you all, my birthday live stream, and Team Tabo... OFG crew launching April 5th with special guest Norby David, a former member of River Maya. Yes, everybody, you know, bookmark that or click on it and get the notification for this. Joji has a really fun live stream. You know, her and Old Fart Gaming, they like to karaoke and, you know, they, they keep asking me to karaoke with them. But I, 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 you know what, I think I want to. And it's not a matter I think I want to. I want to. I just want to make sure I have the right gear, you know, because, you know, I'm a gear guy, right? to get what I need to ensure that I do it right. So uh, Scott shared with me his uh, his soundboard. And if you haven't figured it out already, um, cheap is great, but I also have a tendency to break things that are that are cheap. So recognize I'm probably going to break this, you know, pretty soon. <laughs> so um, I do have it because I'm, I'm rough with my toys and my gear. I, I have 36 drones, not because I, you know, because... I got an addiction. Maybe I do have an addiction. <laughs> but I have 36 drones because I do have a tendency to break. I've broken a lot of drones already. But, all right, so these are the icons. Let's see, operating channel. Let's see, one. I just want to take a quick look here. 7525, operating frequency, CT, CSS activated, DCS activated. Okay, just making sure I can see where they're located too. Frequency offset direction for accessing repeaters. All right, plus or minus. Dual watch, dual reception, and obviously I'm not going to memorize this. I'll learn and memorize this over time through use, right? Just like we, we do with everything. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Vox function enabled. One, two, three, four. Verse narrow band. Do you hear music in the background? Oh, oh, that, no. I have the Fortnite thing pulled up here, but I'm not playing. I was, I was watching my old, my other video, but all right, so. Signal strength, there it is, indicates A or B frequency is in use. Low transmitter power. Okay, complete and continue. So, a little bit about what is the PTT button on the side of the radio? Button used to program the radio, button used to begin transmitting that must be used with caution. Programmable technical trainer button, the button used to change channels. Confirm. Correct. You should... Make sure to follow FCC rules and have the proper license to transmit on the given frequency. All right. How do you turn your hand on your handheld radio? Turn the knob at the top of the radio. If you're not sure what, what that's talking about, that's right here. Here is the, 
turn your knob on knob turn your knob on knob <laughs> turn your radio on knob <laughs> confirm so all right next three of three what is this button used for to change frequency mode and channel mode to start transmitting to switch between top display and bottom display to increase power of the radio to change between frequency and channel mode VFO MR button switches between frequency mode and channel mode. Channel contains frequencies programmed into the radio. So continue. Using the basic controls. In this activity, you will turn on your radio and go through some basic options. Do not use the PTT button during this activity. Roger that. So it's a video, 51 second video, or I could walk through it. So I just want to walk through it. I want to play another video at this time. Turn the knob clockwise to turn on the radio. All right, first time. <laughs> awesome I know I'm, I'm a super nerd right <laughs> all right turn the knob clockwise turn on your radio your radio will say either frequency mode or channel mode do you remember what it said it actually said channel mode this time to tell you which mode you're in all right so I am we are in channel mode currently press the orange VFO MR button to change between frequency mode and channel mode frequency mode <laughs> Channel mode. Frequency mode. Frequency mode. Channel mode. Channel mode. Cool. <laughs> I know, super nerd, right? Press the blue A B button a few times to change between the top and bottom displays. What? Top and bottom display. All right, let's see here. So I'm gonna press this A B button here. You know, what? let's do this so you can see better instead of me holding it up like that. All right, let's see. Can you see this better? I know, right? Cool cat. I'm super nerd. All right. Oh, you did you see the little icons move over? So right there. Right there is that little uh, dot icon. Whoops, whoops, right there. And we are going to go here when I press that button. Cool. Cool. So top display, bottom a display, or A and B. All right, got it. The top display is used when programming a new frequency. You will see the arrow on the left of the screen pointing up or down. Leave the arrow pointing up. Okay, so I can't actually see it. In the, let's see, let's get closer so I can see it in the screen. So I'm Filipino, yeah? Which means I don't. I typically don't take the plastic off furniture. Although my wife is Caucasian, she's a white girl. She makes. She takes all the plastic off the furniture. But I don't take the plastic off my screens unless I need to, because I'm Filipino. <laughs> That's how we do, right, folks? What I'll do is I'll. I'll probably cut that and trim that down a little bit. I, it's a plastic covering. It's a protective. My son's like, Dad, because he's half. He's mestizo. All right? He's like, you got to take it off. <laughs> All right. Um, you'll see there, arrow. Let's see. Let's just do that. Up or down. Okay. Got it. I see. So there is, you could clearly see that it's a up arrow there. Up arrow there. And that should look like a down arrow there. Yeah? Down. Up. Channel A. Channel B. Channel A is used for programming, and channel B, what did it say channel B is for again? Top display is used when programming a new frequency. Got it. Leave the arrow pointing up, okay? Leave the arrow pointing up. Whoop, up there. So we are in the top display at this time. Press the menu button to open the menu options. So, which is right here. S SQL, was that squelch? Click the up and down arrow button several times to cycle through the menu options. All right, so here is my up and down arrow buttons. Can you get closer? Oh, yeah, I can. Can you? There you go. So I'm actually looking at the screen. The, the monitor 
Oh no, I'm actually changing channels right now. I think I got out of the thing. So menu, down, reset all. Roger off. What's that say? Pong's message, repeat, RL off. RP, STE5, STE on. Let's see here. I carefully move the tag on that plastic so it sits on the screen better. Agree 100%. 100% agree. That's what I did with the uh, with the TX16S. Cool cat. I just cut that little tab off. But I need to, I think I need to remove it, remove the whole thing, and then reposition it, and then cut that tab off. But yes, I will be doing the same thing as well. <laughs> Back to menu. TDR, band UHF, all Al Nod, Al Mod site, TX LED orange, RX LED blue, WD LED purple, white LED purple, maybe, delete channel, channel 04, maybe, memory channel, channel 004, offset. Wow, there's great minds think alike. Yeah, Rand. <laughs> Are you you must be Filipino too? <laughs> BCL off. Let's see here. MDF B frequency. MDF A frequency. PTT LT. Press to talk. LT5. And all I'm doing is just walking through this so I have a general idea. I'm not memorizing all this stuff, but I've seen it once already. Therefore, since I've seen it once, I'll be like, oh, where did I see that again? I'll have a general idea of where I heard it. Ooh, voice. I wonder if I could change it to Tagalog. Then I can't understand it at all and my nose will be bleeding. <laughs> TDCS off. And okay, cool. I'm ready to go move on. Click exit. If you don't click anything in the menu for a few seconds, it will exit automatically. So sometimes you need to be quick. Okay, so where's the exit button there? Oop, so here, boom, and exit. All right, cool. So I exited. Back to the original. All right, what's next? Turn the knob counterclockwise to turn off your radio. That's it! There, off. If you stuck with the activity, you have learned the basic controls of your Baofeng radio. Now let's learn how to use your radio in practice. Vet. We are 25% complete with this course. Cool. Reset to factory default settings. Note this lesson is for brand new Baofeng UV5R radio. Let's, uh, let me show you the screen what I'm reading. Perform a factory reset. You know what? Let's see. You want, you want, you want to see the video this time? Let's try it. Can you hear it? I think it was speaking Chinese. Man, if it starts talking to me in Chinese. Anybody in the chat speak Chinese? <laughs> Mandarin? Cantonese? Alright, turn on your radio by twisting the knob. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> it got me. Channel mode. Alright, so we're in channel mode still. Alright. Turn on your radio. This knob is also the volume control, so make sure you leave it a little volume so you can hear the radio's voice prompts to guide you in programming. I'm too old for that kind of setting up, Jason. I will use the kid's walkie-talkie. I get it. Or you have the kids set it up for you. Ah, right? Have the kids set it up for you. Never too old. Never too old to learn something. I mean, if you want to... I mean, Joji, you are a pretty amazing and awesome YouTuber. And karaoke singer, who set all up? Who set all that equipment up for you? Did your kids do it, or did you do it? Huh? This might be easier than setting all that stuff up. So, think about it. My great grandparents are Chinese. Oh, outstanding! Right on. 
Do you, do you speak uh, Cantonese or Mandarin also? Did they see my parents only spoke to me in English? I, I, the only reason why I know a little bit Kuntilang of Tagalog because they yelled at me when I was bad. And yeah, you would think that I should be fluent because I was bad all the time. <laughs> right? My mom and dad are listening probably and they're cracking up right now. Bastos! <laughs> I can't even get the kids to vacuum. All right. But I hear you. But you. But the point is you set all that stuff up, right? And I, I had to learn how to set up my my studio here you know in fact if you're interested in looking at my studio another time i'll i'll walk you through my whole setup and but this took time and although my my son built my my editing computer for me that's over here this this computer he built this for me i said hey i want i need 2022 get me all the best parts because you know i like to buy quality equipment and so he was like all right and not the best best but you know, but good enough, right? <laughs> no, I don't speak Chinese. They are all gone before I was born. Understood. Understood. But my son is actually learning Mandarin right now in college. So, yes, I set up all my studio stuff up. All my studio stuff up. Yeah, it's pretty. And it's fun. And that's kind of what this is for me also. You know, this, this thing here. And who knows? Maybe I can call you. If you have one of these in the future, we can talk via ham radio for free. Think about it. <laughs> but talking only, YouTube is better, right? Because we can see each other. All right, back to the thing. Turn your radio on. So it's on. Press the menu button. This will bring up the menu screen. Menu button. Menu. Okay. Ooh, too loud. Press the menu. This will bring up the menu screen. Press up arrow repeatedly until you arrive at item number 40 to reset all. Okay. So I'm pressing the button. I got to go to menu number 40. Reset all, it said. So they don't seem to be in like an alphabetical order. But that's okay. It is what it is. Oh, let's move this thing off to the side so you can see. Oops. Oh, whoops. I got out. Oh my god, what's happening? Four. Menu. Alright, offset. Mem channel, reset all. Uh, did I? I must have missed it. There, we reset all. Oh. Okay, reset all. You can also type in the number 40 on the keypad. <laughs> cool. Homemade computer. Yes. In fact, Cool Cat has a really good uh, homemade computer as well. And I've determined that when you buy the parts, you can get a, you know, a better computer that's more economical. And at least if I had set it up myself, <laughs> which I need to, you know, relearn, so to speak, because there are some things that I need to fix inside there and add to it I know how to do it myself also so all right so reset oh, I exited out press the menu button and type uh, press the menu button one more time while you are on item number four this will bring the arrow down next to the word all okay so going back into it there this will bring your arrow down to the word all menu once more to bring the screen says source okay source is up let me show you here uh, where did you go? Overhead cam. Cancel. Wait, what? The source. What did it say? What? Oh man, it's in English. It's in Chinese now. What? Oh man. What happened? Exit. Menu. Oh man. Reset all. Menu. Menu. Oh man. This means that your radio is resetting. I think I just reset it. Press the menu one button. Final time to reset your radio to factory setting. All right, so it's at factory settings now, which put it back to, I guess, in China. At this point, the radio starts speaking Chinese. That means the reset was successful. Now let's take it back to English. <laughs> all right cool all right change the language to english okay cool 
press the up arrow menu 14 or type in menu 14 there you go voice all right down and pointed you know, quickly you'll bring it you have to be quick so oops and menu oops sorry about that guys there I want, I want you to see what I'm seeing right that's the whole idea English confirm, confirm. dope cool Press the menu key one more time to save English as your default language. Confirm. Oh man, did I miss it? Menu. Voice prompt. Confirm. Confirm. The radio say we confirm in English. Good. All right. We're English. All right. 33% complete with the course. You completed reset to factory default. Continue. All right. Cool. Hi, this is James K4NEH. And I'm Jim N4BFR. So you just got your ham radio license and you're ready to make that first contact. Forget all the information overload. We're going to show you how easy it is to make your first contact using Simplex on a handheld like one of these. Coming up. One of the most basic things in ham radio is just talking directly radio to radio, one ham to another. It's called Simplex, and you can remember this because it's a simple way to make a contact. Think of it like walkie-talkies, but since we're using ham radio, we're able to use a lot more... I wonder, can you guys hear the video that's playing right now? And are you hearing it through the microphone, or do you hear it like it's pretty clear as if it's playing on your side? I'm just curious to know if you guys can let me know. ...power and frequencies that aren't available to those that don't have a license. After you watch this video, you'll be able to confidently make a simplex contact with your radio. Whether you want to do it in the park like we are, if you want to go off-roading, or if you want to do it in an emergency communication situation. We're going to use the terms handheld and HT interchangeably. What we're basically talking about is a radio you can carry with you while you're out doing things. Now, there's lots of great options for handheld radios out there from brands like Yezu, Icom, Kenwood, and Baofeng. In general, these radios have about 5 watts of power, which means they're good for more or less 5 miles of range. I've decided to use a Baofeng for today because it's pretty affordable and for me it's easy to program. I'm using a Kenwood. I like it because it has an OLED screen and a few advanced features. But the important thing to remember is any of these kind of radios can do this basic simplex contact. Now, a lot of ham radio operators, when they buy one of these, will go ahead and do a basic upgrade, which is buy an aftermarket antenna. Now, the reason for that is because the antennas that come with these radios, the rubber duck antennas, are not so great. So by upgrading your antenna, you can get some additional range at a pretty affordable cost as well. You can pick one of these up at a ham store for about 50 bucks. Before we go any further, let's make sure we're straight on license requirements. We're using ham radio handhelds on licensed ham radio frequencies. But the good news is you only need the most basic technician level to get started here. Now, this is extremely important because operating on ham radio frequencies without a license can lead to serious fines or even imprisonment. There are other radio services like FRS or CB that you can use without a license. We decided to use ham radio today because by getting our license, we've got more power available, more frequencies that's going to give us some more range and also some more room for experimentation. These radios we've chosen are set up to operate on the 2 meter and 77 meter bands. So that's what we're going to be picking today. Why don't we go ahead and make our first contact on the very popular 2 meter band, which is one of the most popular bands in all of ham radio. And it's great for making a direct line of sight communication on simplex. So the 2 meter band, although it's a single band, actually is made up of a frequency range from 144 to 148 megahertz. And all ham radio operators share this range. So what we use is something called a band plan to break up that frequency range into smaller frequency chunks that are allocated for different modes of operation. So what we're going to do is just search for Georgia band plan and we'll pull up the frequencies that are available for our area. And looking at that printout, we can see all different frequencies. And what we're going to be looking for specifically is FM simplex voice. We're going to want to avoid anything that says D-Star, DMR, Digital Packet. Those aren't what we need for today. And we find a few frequencies in that range that we could potentially use. Now, the reason we want to make sure we're sticking to FM simplex is because there's a lot of different things happening in 2-meter FM. 
and you don't want to just pick a frequency at random and end up on top of somebody's earth moon earth contact or in the middle of a repeater contact so we're going to stick to the fm simplex area which in georgia is 146 to 147 megahertz all right so all we need to do is find a frequency and looking at our band plan we find 146.430 megahertz as an fm simplex voice frequency that we can use and so the idea here is we're going to write that frequency down and then we're going to program both of our radios to talk on that same frequency there was one frequency in that band that we could have chosen but decided to avoid that's called the national calling frequency it's 146.52 megahertz and it's used for hands to find each other while they're traveling around we want to have a separate area to work in today so we chose a frequency off of that frequency all right so with that, we've got our frequency selected, 146.430, and we're ready to program our radios. So let's make sure your radio's good to go. You've got the battery charged up, it's powered on, you've got the antenna screwed on tight so you're making good contact. We're ready to enter the frequency. Now on most radios, you're going to find a button labeled B slash M. The M stands for memories, how you program in for a repeater. The V is for variable frequency oscillator mode. That's where we're going to directly enter our frequency. So with my radio in VFO mode, it literally could not be easier. All I have to do is enter in that six digit code. So one, four, six, four, three, zero. And just like that, I've programmed my frequency into the radio. The Valkyrie makes it really easy. It's not that much harder on the Kenwood. All you need to do once you're in VFO mode is press the enter button and then one, four, six, four, three, zero. The radio knows where to put the decimal point, so you don't have to worry about that part. All right, awesome. And if you've done this correctly, you should see that both radios have the same frequency listed on the front. This is simplex, so remember, we're just transmitting, receiving on the same frequency. The radios are speaking the same language, so they can talk to each other easier. And these totally look good to go, so I think we should make a contact. I think we're ready to make a contact. Let's do it. Now with our radios programmed to the right frequency, there's just one more thing we want to do before we make that contact, which is we're just going to wait on this frequency and listen and make sure that another ham radio operator isn't using the frequency. We've gone ahead and separated by a mile or two, and now we're ready to finally press that push to talk button and see if we can make a contact. This is Kilo November 4, November Echo Hotel. Jim, can you hear me? KN4NEH, this is Jim, N4BFR, I hear you loud and clear. Jim, you are coming through great over here, buddy, and I've got to say, it is a beautiful day here at Stone Mountain, Georgia, to be operating on some ham radios. How's it going? It's going wonderful. I'm trying to spot some things that you and I may want to gather up and see later. Great way to coordinate that is with using our ham radios. And I have to say, it was incredibly easy to program these. We can coordinate amongst ourselves, we can talk around the mountain, and it's great practice for an emergency situation, or if we just want to go off the beaten path and not use our cell phones. And I want everybody to notice, too, we're not giving our call sign out after every time we go back and forth. When you're having a conversation like this, you do need to give it out, but only every 10 minutes. All right, well, thanks for making the contact, Jim, and uh, you can come on back to base camp. This is KN4NEH. All right, I'll hike back over to you. This is November 4, Bravo, Foxtrot, Romeo. Congratulations. If you followed our instructions, you probably just made your first simplex contact. If you didn't, no need to worry. We have lots of troubleshooting information for you, too. So thanks for watching, and 73 for now. We hope to hear you on the air soon. 73. You know, Jim, this has been really fun making simplex contacts, but you know what would be even better? I'm having a blast. What would be better, though? What if we added a third person to our simplex crew? Let's do it. What's going on, guys? You're hey, me? Jack! What's happening? Jack, what are you doing in here? I'm here to join your simplex crew. I thought you were in the studio. I just was a second ago. I don't know how I got here. What frequency are you guys on? We're on 146.430. All right, let's get this simplex group on. Hey, simplex group. This is James, Kilo November 4, November Echo Hotel. Are you able to hear me okay? KN4NEH, this is N4BFR. I hear you loud and clear. You know what? I bumped into Jack a few minutes ago. Let me see if we can find him. Hey, Jim, I hear you loud and clear. This is Jack, KF0DHD. Signal coming through strong. Um, I, I made it up a little bit past where you were on the trail. James, where are you located up? I am still over here at the base of the mountain, and I have to say, Jack, it is great to hear that you're out of the studio. I know you've been busy with the new videos. 
Jack, I see you're uh, over near the top of the mountain. Are you going to try and do any summits on the air while you're there? I might try to do a couple summits on the air, see if I can connect to a couple repeaters, see how far I can get my signal out there. It is so easy to get in on this. Remember, guys, we're doing a three-person simplex group just as easy as making a two-person simplex group. Ensure everyone's on the same frequency, make sure you're in the right band, and you're good to go. Sounds easy enough. This is James Keel, November 4, November Echo Hotel, saying 73. This is Jim N4, BFR. I'm done train spotting and headed on back. This is Jack KF0 DHD. I'm going to head back down the trail towards base camp. We're in contact with the guy, 73. All right. Learn more about Simplex, uh, maybe later. Continue. Ah, okay. <laughs> Put me right into it. Uh, let's see here. Um, you know what, folks? We've been at it for a good hour already. And it's 9 o'clock here on my side. Maggie's got to go outside. I mean, she hasn't come in here. She usually comes in here and, and taps on me to say, Hey, Dad, I need to go outside. But I think I want to go ahead and call it for right now. I'm not going to make a contact on this radio yet tonight. And I want to look at the band plan a little bit more. And I want to look at the frequency that I need to be contacting at. And I might actually, I don't have anybody to talk to. Yeah, I've got a second radio, but that other radio should have another amateur radio license operator on it. And or I'm just transmitting in the blind where I call CQ, you know, CQ, CQ, you know. This is Kilo Oscar Golf. Kilo Oscar for Zulu Golf Uniform calling CQ. That would be how I would make my first call, which would be pretty cool if someone actually picked up, you know. So, on that note, though, um, let's see who else is hanging out with me right now. I've got the Joji, I've got Cool Cat hanging out, and no one else is on because everybody else is out playing games. Right, which means maybe it's time for me to play some games also. Does anybody else in here play Fortnite? <laughs> it's funny. I had a bunch of the, my my STEM kids this morning in the class. We um we started talking about Fortnite, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you ever get you ever get eliminated by Cyrus And they're like, "We don't really look at the kill feed, you know." And I was like, "All right, cool. Well, if you do, you know, that's me. That's this guy." <laughs> they're like, "What?" You play? I was like, yeah, I just started three months ago. So, yeah. But I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll go through the rest of this class with you guys another time. But I did really only wanted to keep this particular live stream to, to an hour long. Um, but I really appreciate you hanging out with me. I am going to get on and play some Fortnite here in a little bit so that I can, you know, just wind down and enjoy. As funny as it sounds, right? Because it, it can be stressful, right? I might actually learn about this simplex stuff, which is more reading on my part and less setting up, less action on my side for you to actually see what I do. You know, either that, and unless you want to watch me glue back together my SpongeBob coffee mug over here that I broke, <laughs> the the glue came in, but I haven't had a chance yet to to to, to glue Humpty Dumpty back together again. So. Does anybody have any questions for me? What I got going on? You know, what I had going on throughout the day? What uh, what I'm planning on doing? Or want to say something else? Feel free to say it in the chat. Otherwise, I will be signing off on here. And just like they were saying there in that video, 73, right? Or you know, in iFly language, 73, meaning best regards in ham radio speak. You know, I say 73 in iFly speak because that's how we communicate numbers to each other. I know that, let's see, this is three in American Sign Language. Is this three in th American Sign Language? I think it was one, two, three is, I think this is three. And let's say this is three. And then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's seven. So that would be 73, right? Something like that. I don't remember what American Sign Language is. But we say 73. Three at iFly Virginia Beach in indoor skydiving in tunnel operations. So, cool cat. Good night. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Once I get things set up and once I get my base station set up for HF uh, talk, we'll be talking. <laughs> you know that would be pretty cool, right? That would be pretty cool. All right. On that note, have a great evening, everyone. I really appreciate you hanging out and enjoy and enjoying my live stream with me. I really enjoy getting back on the air with you guys. With and no, seriously, thank you.
thank you for for listening in and participating and you know being there you know being there so i'll see you guys on your live streams later on another time and or catch up on your other your previous live streams too all right have a great evening everyone good night